Oh, it's cafecito. This is our cat. Um, so the next place that we're gonna talk about is enriched missions. How are we as an organization being affected by COVID? Yeah, there's a couple of um, different categories when we talk about enriched missions as an organization. So let's talk about staff. Um, we have two new missionaries that have come to Nicaragua to work with us, Megan and Elizabeth. They have done an amazing job. They landed in like February of 2020 and then March of 2020, COVID hit. So they hit the ground here as missionaries and then we quarantined everybody. That was pretty difficult. That was pretty difficult. And we had to kind of um, calibrate and figure out the correct way to handle new missionaries who are doing language learning, doing cultural homestays, learning about the country of Nicaragua, and suddenly everything that they were doing um, was online. So that was a big challenge. I think and I have the benefit of being together, right? We got locked down with each other. That's best case scenario, to be honest. Um, but man, I cannot imagine being a new missionary on the field, single, and then suddenly in a lockdown. That had to have been really, so keep them in prayer. Yeah, you know, I guess and then, um, our programs were affected um, yeah. when, I wanna say it was like the day after Wayne's birthday. So March 19th was kind of our, mm -hmm. our lockdown day um, where we went ahead and stopped all in-person congregating programs. So that was all of our enrichment classes, art, music, jujitsu, um, and ballet, as well as the nutrition program. It's pretty much everything. Everything that everything. we do. Everything we do, we do to get, you know, you guys know we're so community based, but spending time together, sitting down with kids, um, you know, a, a pandemic that requires quarantining is adverse to that, you know, it's anti-community. And then over the course of the next two weeks, we Zoomed each other, you know, from around the city um, and really tried to think about, okay, but what can we do? Because we want to make sure that we're continuing to serve our students and their families in the best way possible. So while we really love the enrichment program, um, the nutrition program is where we landed on where we needed to be spending that time and making a, a safe space to be able to continue doing it. So yeah. we came out of um, the first two week lockdown and started doing to-go lunches. Um, so we would have no more than two of us in the enrichment center. We'd prep all the food, put it in boxes. We were wearing masks, we were using gloves, we were mm -hmm. spraying, we were washing. Um, and then the kids would line up and we would just hand their food out so they could take it home and not be all together. Um, and then in addition to that, we were able to do, I wanna say we did it for about six, maybe eight weeks. Once a week, we did a pack, like a food pack that we sent home with rice and beans and oil and sugar and coffee. Um, for the family. For the family. Yeah. Um, and I gotta say, it really did work out great. It was a great, great way to calibrate. These kids come up to the doors, they pick up their to-go lunch, they get their vitamin, and uh, the health committee kind of at large, and Enrich Missions as a whole, we, we kind of looked at that and said, Keeping kids as healthy as possible should be a priority during the pandemic. Keeping immune systems up, keeping vitamins in them, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I thought that was a great, a great way to handle it. How did COVID affect us as a family, the Tingle family? Um, well, it, it was kind of unique, you know. Again, we've never had to live through something like this. So we had just sent Allison off to college. I want to say in. February. February. And um, a few weeks later, she was turned around and sent back here because the college was closing all the dorms. Uh, fortunately, both of our kids were able to switch to online classes like I'm sure a lot of you, your guys' kids were um, had to do. And both of my kids, um, Allison and Emily, you know, my kids, <laughs> I can hate it when I do that. Both of our kids did pretty well. Like they adjusted to online learning um, quite well. I know a lot of Nicaraguan kids really had a challenge with that but our kids did really well. So I was really happy to see that. They have both gone back to school at this point and, and you know, it's all masks and social distancing and all of that kind of stuff, but they're doing pretty well. Um, and then it was, it was difficult for us not to travel in December and January to come see you guys, to visit with family and friends and churches. But with everything that was going on, with the one airline that was flying and all of the, the hoops to jump through, um, we decided as a family that our best course of action would be to buy a giant tree and uh, make some new traditions here. So we were together. We got to spend time with Megan and Elizabeth over the holidays as well so that they felt um, a little more 
at home. Um, and we're really, really, really looking forward to the time when we are able to come visit and see everybody and hug your necks. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's gonna be until 2022 at this point. Um, there's, airlines are still incredibly unpredictable. People are getting canceled all the time. Uh, it's just a really difficult time to travel right now. Uh, but man, we miss you guys so much. We would love to be there. We would love to, to be going to people's houses and doing Christmas parties and all of the stuff that we normally do. Um, and it's kind of heartbreaking for us to not be able to do those things. We're happy to say that today in April of 2021, all of our programs are back up to almost 100% capacity um, using security measures that have, you know, standed the test of time with the virus and everything that's happening. So the nutrition program is still happening on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We're currently serving a community of about 130 students um, at each meal, and we're using spaced out seating as well as um, hand washing and things like that to keep that process going. Our ballet, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and art classes have all gotten ramped back up and they are all meeting also using um, healthy security measures. And music is on hold until we find a new music teacher and we're also a little concerned about having to be able to clean all of the instruments between students and keep that sanitary. So we're, we're looking for solutions there. Um, we're tutoring, we are having library time, and um, we're just really grateful for all of the opportunities God is giving us to serve. But that is how COVID has affected Enrich Missions, the country of Nicaragua, all of our programs, the Tingle family, our new missionaries, and everybody else in the last year-ish and stay tuned for more videos answering more of your pressing questions about who we are and what we do that's right you got q's we got a's and we got more videos coming thanks